So what is, what is a pro approach position and what is a depart position? So an approach position or the at position. So the at position means like at the part. So right now we are at the at position of this part. At position, also known as the pickup position. Okay, so like whenever you go here and then you go down. So this would be the approach position or the above position. Visibility. So this is why you have things uh, visible and uh, invisible. And you can turn on and off different things. So now we just have the fixed string and I don't have all that fencing out here in my way. Also, RoboGuide will respond faster. The more stuff you have inside a RoboGuide, the more lag and delay there'll be. So going and looking at this, according to this fixturing, we're actually not at the at position. So we're going back to position now. Right now we're actually at the above position or the approach position. So if you're gonna use a, or, or be doing a, an approach position, this approach position should be a linear position. So from here, I'll show you how you can change from a joint to a linear. And you also seen there was the circular option. So this robot is equipped with the circular option, linear. So you need to be over top of the, the either the linear or the joint, the L or the J, and then you hit the choice button down here. To go into like some more features that are there, and we'll get into this in a, in a second. But now hovering over the one, this gives you different options. Now you can choose between a position and a position register. We'll have to stay tuned for the position and position register thing. This would probably be set as a position register and not a position, and we'll get into that in the later section of the video. Then position. So now we're looking at the physical position this is recorded at in space. So like what user frame we're using, what user tool we're using is right here. User frame zero, user tool one. Most of the time you'll almost always have like a user frame number. Uh, so like this frame number would be accordance with this fixture here. So if ever anybody wanted to move this fixturing, they would reteach the user frame and then they would, the, all the positions would follow. They wouldn't have to reteach every single position. Because for example, this, this tooling here has at least like nine positions in it that are taught. So we'll add another point. So we'll also make this a linear point and also fine. Again, these fine positions are what kind of will help you define. So when you're reading through a program and then you see fine positions, you know, you, you should know that the robot is handing something. It's either approach position or it's an at position. So now one thing I want to point out here is see we have two at positions. The reason why is I just recorded both these positions at the same position. So the robot is physically at these positions. So I'm gonna click position. And so what we need to do is modify the Z. So like, let's say first I wanna alter this position to be the, the, the pickup position. Okay, so I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna look at, by the way, I'm using the right clicker and the scroll wheel. So scroll wheel gives you the pan to move back side to side and the right clicker gives you the ability to rotate. So that just helps you kind of like move around and robo guide a little bit. So I'm trying to analyze how far I am from here to where my pickup position is here. So maybe it's like 200 mm or something like that. Now, in the real world, you definitely don't want to overshoot because an overshoot shoot can be a crash condition uh, and, you're, and also you'll manually, you need to manually test it anyway. So let's say for instance, we're at negative like 148. So these are just rough numbers for right now. So let's just say negative 300. So I'm adding to the negative. So we just went negative 150 more roughly. Okay, so negative 150 more will then drop us into, will drop us down lower. So I'll just say done. And so now you can see we're not at the same position anymore. This is, we're at this position, but we're not at this new one because I modified the position. So now that position in space has moved down. Actually, matter of fact, to perfectly call that out, since we're in this program and we're in RoboGuide, this is like an advantage also of RoboGuide. This is Notice like I'm, I'm navigating RoboGuide, just going back and forth between the, the right clicker and the scroll wheel click to make it, uh, so that way I can like get to exactly where I want to look at. So like whenever you're doing these type of things, like you have to dig in, look deep and study what you're seeing, you know? So like you're gonna have to move this thing around and see exactly. So I can kind of look at this and see that like it's a little bit lower than what it needs to be. 
and that's basically what I'm analyzing. So this is that second position. It looks a little bit lower than what it should be. It also looks like the the, the robot is not currently over the appropriate position. And so you can see right here, P1, P2, P1, P2. So it, 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 it so nice advantage of Robo Guide. You don't really get this in the the real world robot. You might be able to see this in uh, some of the newer robots have uh, like 4D, and you might be able to look up and see these inside the 4D viewer. Yeah, so like you like you just advised, we're probably too far down, so we'll say negative 275 instead of negative 300. So we removed a little bit of that. And now so we, when we say done, you should modify that position and brought it up just a little bit. And it probably did. So whenever we went from 300, we're talking in millimeters. So roughly a good rule of thumb is 25 millimeters is an inch. Yeah, so you might have some teach pin of things that are a little bit different because like this, this step button is over here versus a lot of times the step button is over here. So some of your buttons might be in a different position. So shift, step. So you can see up here in the top, this is, these are your indicators, whether you're in step mode or not. So you can see it toggling at the top there. So we want to be in step mode because if not, it's going to just run through the program. So I just put in step mode. I jogged the robot down. And now we can kind of look at where the, like, the robot's position it. So I would say like the word for this is I just forwarded through the program. I forwarded through the program and I tested the position that I just wrote. So now I'm just looking at that. I need to be over here. So this position is completely off from where I actually need to be. You know, I can go go ahead and just and go in here real quick and mess around with this position. By the way, notice this is really just a uh, robo guide issue, but like, see how I'm clicking my cursor around and it's going to the beginning and the end? It's because the shift key's held down. You'll make this, you'll make this mistake like a thousand times. But yeah, so I turn that off and then I can go here. I'll go to position again and then, uh, I need to zoom out from the robot to see where the base of the robot is. So once you know the base of the robot, then you know your X, Y, Z, if this is in, if this is in a world frame. So if we're in world frame, the, the robot's facing me, so, or facing us, however, however you're looking at this, but which means X is facing towards me. And then Y is facing uh, away from this fixturing. So Y positive is this direction, X is this direction, and then obviously Z positive there. So the reason for that is, is now, like I notice my, the robot is uh, off in this direction here. So I know that if this is a positive and I need to go over some more, I'll zoom in again. I'll see like, okay, like how, how many millimeters do you think this is? Uh, maybe 50 or 75 millimeters, okay? So going with my right hand rule, that means positive is this way. So I need to go in the negative direction towards the part. Uh, so with that being said, if I need to go to the negative direction, let's say 75 millimeters, I'll just also say with rough positioning, this is negative 1950. Obviously, like your final programming, like you'll fine tune this and might have to get it down to some closer millimeters. Just kind of depends on what operation you have. Some operations, it doesn't really matter. I'm glad that just happened. This is something that a lot of people will make this mistake and be very, very careful to not make this mistake uh, because it'll just, it can cause some major issues. But the mistake is, I basically just exited it out. I didn't give it, I didn't say done. So if I just say next or select or any other button, if I don't press this done button, it won't confirm the changes that I just made. Which means I, th I let, if I don't press the done button, I think I made the changes, I didn't make the changes, and I'll be like, I'll be, first of all, I'll be confused. Secondly, if it was something to avoid some type of crash, well now you're gonna crash because, you know, you didn't make the change you thought you was gonna make. So we'll say done. Notice I'm not at, at any of the positions now because I modified this position and we're not actually at that position. So again, we'll do the exact same process, shift forward. In the real world, this would create a crash. So this tool right here, this purple piece, would crash into this part. So you'd have to jog the robot up and then you'd have to move the robot, or you wouldn't necessarily have to move the robot over, but you have to at least jog the robot up before forwarding. Now I don't care because it's simulation software so I can run right into the part if I want. So shift forward. 
Okay, get, this is another one that'll really help with any type of program things. Function, one, abort all. So abort all basically means abandon what you was doing in a program because the program will lock onto particular positions. So since I already forwarded to this position before, so going back into the shift forward, I'm gonna shift forward. It came over here a little bit too far. In RoboGuide, you can also use the shift key to turn on and off the shift. And also too, one thing that's really nice is see how the shift key, when I, when I hold the shift key, it holds the shift button. So you don't accidentally leave it on. So it's kind of, that's kind of nice. So shift forward, I'm already at that position. I need to modify that position again. Position, modify. So I went too much. So we'll just say like negative 1925. So I just went from negative 1950 to negative 25. I got to hit the done button, make sure to hit the done button. And then we're also, we're, again, we're not at the position. And I already know just from experience, I need to go function one aboard all because uh, it's gonna do the same thing and not let me go to that position if I don't do that first. So I can click the shift button here or I can click the shift button on my keyboard and then go forward. Boom, now we're at the position. That position looks fairly appropriate. We're still not at the position 100% because we're not uh, inside the part. This little purple ring should be inside this, this part. One thing to keep in mind is now that we modified all these things right here, our approach position is not in the appropriate position because we recorded it up here when, all, when everything was off. So the Z height of it doesn't really matter, but we changed the Y direction. So this is another use case where doing direct entry, this is also what this is called. So when I click position and I manually punch these in, we call that direct entry. Uh, so ne negative 1925, I'll take that number. I hit the escape button. I don't need to do anything there, but now I'm gonna go up to here. I'm gonna go inside this position and I'm gonna give it that same negative 1925, enter, done. And also it, it's good practice to do this as well. Hit position again and, and look at your number and make sure it's there. That verifies that I, I hit the done button. It's you're, you're as a human confirming that this process or this data was, was taken into the robot. There may be some weird instances where you do hit done and it's still, for some reason, the data didn't go to the robot. This is almost like a never type of chance, but you just never know. Okay, so, boom, boom, boom. So now we can zoom out. Uh, you may not be able to see it, but that, posi that position is directly above now because it has the same Y direction. The X and the Y match. So whenever you do an approach position, your X and your Y need to match your at position. And the reason for that is you want your robot to come directly down. Uh, this is when you're moving in a downward motion too, right? So when moving down, you need your X and Y need to be in the same positions because you want to move down in, a very, in an exactly straight line. There's approach positions. I want to add this caveat to this. If your approach position is inside of something, like so if you're going this way, so your approach is here and then your at position's inside, then you need to make sure like your Y and your Z are the exact same. So you got to think about relative to which way you're going. Same, same we'll use Y as another example. Let's say for, for some odd reason you need to go into the Y direction you need to make sure that your X and your Z data is the same. That way you still move in a straight line in Y. And so just this verification, the only thing you do is you just open up your positions. You say, what is my X? It's 758. My Y is negative 1925. And then you just come down to your other position. 758, negative 1925. So now you've confirmed those uh, you know, those positions that they're directly above each other. One last thing to kind of touch on with, with, with positions, speeds, just keep in mind, like this is where you can change your speeds. Whenever doing a linear movement, these will be millimeters per second. And whenever doing a joint movement, they will be, they'll be in percentage. 
they'll just be in a percentage. So is it running at 10% speed, 50% speed? And I'll just switch that real quick. Joint, switch this position to a joint. So now see how it's fine, or it, it's a joint position now. And then your speed is 100%. Gotcha. So the equivalent linear speed that's 100%, I believe is 2000. So like if I try to put in 2200, it'll say you can't do that. Yeah, invalid integer. You have to choose a number between one and 2000. So 2000 uh, millimeters per second is the fastest that you can go. Also, if you, you there, there's also choices to change it inches per minute, degrees per second, things like that. But every program that I've ever worked in has always been millimeters per second, and there's really not a reason to change it.